magic masses. I am longtime independent wrestling fan Robert. Kingdom Come 7, Tower of Magic was one. Yeah, I'm still not recovered, but it was one awesome, great, kick, motherfucking ass show. And it was a quite the occasion for me to return to pro wrestling magic after missing most of the shows in 2022. Uh, the show kicked off with pre-show action, as we saw first in a singles match, Yankee, as he went up against Monteo, or is it Montero Marcelo? All apologies about his name, but uh, Marcelo got the victory over Yankee in the uh, first match of the pre-show. And then... We had ourselves a four-way matchup as we saw the legendary Magic, Travis Jacobs, and Daniel Alexander challenge Clark Williams for the Gen Pro Wrestling Alpha Champ Championship. Uh, they uh, was announced they're going to be having a show in January, and I forgot the name of the town in Jersey they're going to run in. Uh, Clark Williams defeated Magic, Daniel Alexander, and Travis Jacobs to retain the Gen Pro Wrestling Alpha Championship which pretty much concluded the uh, pre-show. Then it was on to the main show. As we began, Shane Fair announced to the crowd they were going to start with a tag team match, but out comes Kerr. And he gets the microphone. He says it's about moments and opportunities. He says, I'm not waiting anymore, Dad. Moff, get out here right now. And Moff comes out. He throws the championship belt right in Kerr's face and seemingly it cut him open because... He was started bleeding almost right away, and then they out go out to the floor, and oh boy, they even like using chairs on each other right in front of me. Uh, other stuff that went on. Ooh, uh, they brought doors into play, and I forgot who they were putting each other through doors. Uh, Kerr hits uh, Moff with like three choke slams. Moff kicked out of that. Moff ended up putting Kerr in some kind of a submission choke hold. And then, as the referee, referee Nick Shin was he traced checking Kerr's arm, it dropped a third time before uh, Nick could signal to end the match. Kerr grabs Nick, and he puts him in a sleeper hold and put him out pretty quickly. And Moff eventually gets up, and he's yelling, looking to the Kerr, and he's saying, get another referee out here. Eventually, another referee comes out, and escorts, uh, helps, Nick, helps roll, roll Nick Shin out of the ring, and I think it's safe to say, Nick Shin was limp as a biscuit. And eventually, Moff... Oh, I don't know if he was climbing the top rope, or but he was... Kerr grabs a Moff. He does an overhead press into a power slam, much like Goldberg was known for. I think it was onto... I can't remember if it was onto chairs or not. And the, the other referee, I forgot who was the other referee, counted the three, and Kerr defeated Dan Moff to become the new... Pro Wrestling Magic Heavyweight Champion in a... And by the way, this was a Bayonne Street Fight, by the way, folks. I forgot to mention that. And then Kerr gets the microphone, and... I forgot what he said. And Kerr was about to leave the ring, and Moff says, You're not getting off that easy. And eventually... Um, Vicious Vicky, who was not on the show, she brought, like, two Bud Lights into the ring for them. And they both have Bud Lights in their hands, and, and they, they drank... Each drank, I'm sure they were thirsty as heck after that match, especially Kerr with all the blood loss he suffered. Whew. Um, and then they both left the ring, and, and it was on to the next matchup. As we see, it was scheduled to be J. J. George taking on Hispanos Unidos member Steve Pena. Unfortunately, for some reason, J. George didn't show up, and we ended up getting Colossal Mike Law taking on Steve Pena, who was accompanied the ring by, I think, just the entire Hispanos Unidos. J.C. Storm, Donovan, Azriel, Sebastian Cage, and Trey Felipe. Um, even though hmm, Mike Law was not scheduled, but I found this to be a good matchup. The end came when Pena was doing, like, elbow stripes on Law to the point where the referee stopped, stopped the match due to it was a ref stoppage that Mike Law couldn't continue, and as a result, Steve Pena defeated Colossal Mike Law and is now 
the proprietor of the key, even though it was a big, it looked like a big, one big key. Uh, I heard of key to the city, but it says the keys to the kingdom that Steve Pena now has. And I understand it can be exercised at any time and there is no expiration date. By the way, I forgot to mention, I was very surprised Moff and Curve started the main show. I mean, there was four main events for this event and and I was surprised they Kerr and Moff kicked off the show. Okay, third match, we see... Nick Pierce go one-on-one -on -one with the recently reinstated one-winged dragon, Chris Ryan, where the winner would get a spot in the Chad Adams Rumble coming in January. Uh, forgot how, how, well, eventually Chris Ryan took his dumbbell from underneath the ring and used it on Pierce. Oh, and I've got to mention the match was refereed by Crystal. Uh, I think Pierce accidentally bumped into her in the corner, and that's when... Chris Ryan took his dumbbell from under the ring and hit Pierce with it. And Crystal made the three count. And as a result, Chris Ryan has earned a spot in the Chad Adams Memorial Rumble. I'll have more on that later. And I don't know if the, stipu the other stipulation is still going to stand where the loser would be suspended indefinitely. So we'll see how if that's going to stick or not. Next up, it was time for the Junior Heavyweight Championship as the Brooklyn Outlaw Donovan was defending against Vinny... Power Punch Pacifico. Don't know where that nickname came from. Pacifico entered the ring to um, uh, the Backstreet Boys Larger Than Life. And both ref Nick Shin and Shane Fair were dancing as Pacifico made his way to the ring. And folks, I'm sorry, sorry to say this, but I was not big on the boy band craze of the late 90s and early 2000s. You know, in my, in my view, boy bands are sissies. Uh, this, by the way, this was a last man standing match where if Pacifico loses, he'll have to leave Pro Wrestling Magic, and Donovan would get five minutes alone with commentator Jimmy Riot. Now, these guys, oh boy. Whew. This was such a mad, another chaotic match as you'd expect. I mean, they went into the crowd, like, poor portions of the audience had to get out of the way, clear, clear, the, clear the way for both of them to go at it. Eventually, um... Two doors were put were brought into play. They were set up on tables. Donovan brought this big, huge ladder. I think that was underneath the ring until it was brought brought in until Donovan grabbed it. Uh, wow. Mm. Wow. Um, Donovan. I mean, there was many, many, many times both Donovan and Pacifico would get up at the count of eight or nine. Uh, the end came when they were, they were, they were right near, right near where I was sitting. The, the ladder set up, and they're both on the ladder, and I mean, I, I feel for Nick Shin was even trying to hold the ladder steady so that nothing goes wrong and they don't both of them won't fall off and stuff. But eventually, Pacifico, I've got he pushed or knocked Donovan off that ladder. He went crashing through one of the two doors that was set up on the chairs. And the ref, Nick Shin, made the count of the 10. Vinny Pacifico declared the winner of the new Pro Wrestling Magic Junior Heavyweight Champion. And commentator Jimmy Ryan eventually came in the ring to celebrate with Pacifico on a great victory. Pacifico had, had an awesome 2022 in Pro Wrestling Magic. Whew. Man, oh man, oh man. Up next, it was time for the Tag Team Championship Magic. As representing Hispanos Unidos... The Fresh Elite, Trey Felipe, and the lit superstar Sebastian Cage defended the belts against John Tella and El Blanco Oso, or El Oso Blanco Bruno. I'm not sure which way it goes. And they're collectively known as Death Row. Uh, Felipe and Cage actually attacked before the belt, before the gong went off. And I forgot to mention something. During the... Uh, Pacifico Donovan matchup. Donovan brought the gong into play, and I thought the gong was done for. I mean, it survived because I would have. I mean, you know, that's like one of the main things that sets pro wrestling magic apart from other feds out there. Instead of ringing a bell, just like the song, bang a gong, get it on. <laughs> 
Good matchup by both teams. At one point, a great highlight. Felipe did a dive off the stage onto Bruno, who was in the crowd. Uh, man. Whew. Um, I forget how it happened, but Death Row defeated Trey Felipe and Sebastian Cage to win the Tag Team Championship. Great effort by both tag teams in this one. Next up, it was, we're going to see Ruthless Lala of Prolific challenge Hispanos Unidos to J.C. Storm for the Women's Championship. Right before the match got underway, out comes the notorious Mimi, who is now back on the independent circuit after he, she was released. She was released from NX, NXT earlier this year. I forgot what her name was over there. And it was a three-way matchup, which saw... Uh, Ruthless Lala defeat Notorious Mimi and JC Storm to win the Pro Wrestling Magic Women's Championship. And Lala took the microphone after the match and, uh, ah. I forgot what she was saying, but, uh, I think Notorious Mimi, she got her hands on the women's belt and she hit Lala with it. And I think, unless I'm wrong, Storm chased Mimi out of there and Lala and Storm hugged after the matchup. I mean, after, well, not after the match, but after Mimi got out of there. Up next, it was history in the making, as we saw it was going to be a, a try, the first, the finals of the tournament to crown the first ever Tri Wizards champions. As we saw, it was going to be Isaiah Wolf, Marcus Mar Marquise Marcus, or Marcus Marquis, all apologies for getting his name wrong, and Tyree Taylor were set to take on the takeover. But Prolific comes to the ring and they announce that the takeover didn't show up. So they put out, they didn't want the, 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 the belts handed to them. So they put out a challenge, any any trio. And out comes uh, Clark Williams, Travis Jacobs, and Frat Boy Farva. Well, that's the name on his, that was the name I saw on his gear. And I forgot it was Isaiah Wolf on the microphone. We're saying, you know, give it up for these three guys for stepping up. And the match was on, and eventually I forgot who, but uh, somebody took the prolific clash, and as a result, prolific defeated Clark Williams, Travis Jacobs, and Frat Boy Farber to become Pro Wrestling Magic's first ever Tri Wizards champions. Hmm. Okay. Next, it was time for the 10-man elimination match to determine who would get 100% control of Pro Wrestling Magic's general manager's position. As we had Team Shane, which was Billy Dixon, Legit Perfect Perkins, and RTB, which is Joe Cruel, V. Daniels, and I forgot Double A's. Double A's. Well, it's not Arn Anderson, obviously. Double A's. Double A. I forgot what it was. His initials stood for all apologies. As they did battle with Team Smiley, which consisted of the All Father, Darius Carter, the Dominican Destroyer Vargas, and Project Mayhem, Osito, Elijah Eden, and Smiley himself. Uh, Vargas had first pinned, uh, first he pinned Double A, and then Vargas pinned uh, Joe Cruel, and making it five on three. Eventually, damn, I forgot who. It was Perkins or Dixon. One of them pinned Elijah Eden. And then Osito got pinned. And then I believe V. Daniels was pinned off. He was pinned by Vargas, Smiley, or Carter. Uh, Vargas got disqualified for attacking the referee. And he's leaving the ring. And Smiley and Carter are not happy. And Carter went so far to call Vargas an idiot. And looked like Vargas would have come back to the ring and go after Vargas was going to go after Carter back in the ring, but he left anyway. Uh, at that point, Carter... Um, yeah, Carter and Smiler are in the ring, and Dixon's wanting to fight both of them, but then Perkins hits Dixon in the balls! And then he attacks Dixon, and all of a sudden, uh, Perkins attacks the referee. He gets disqualified, even though he turned on Team Shane. And leaving Billy Dixon at this point, left alone to face both Smiley and Carter. Um, eventually, I think Carter made a tag, unbeknownst to, against Smiley's wishes, seemingly. And Carter ended up pinning, pinning Billy Dixon, enabling 
uh, Team Smiley to pick up the victory. As a result, Smiley is now 100% of the Pro Wrestling Magic general manager's position. Smiley and Carter, they're telling Shane Fair, you know, to, you know, to leave the ringside area and not come and not look back. And it was, I wouldn't say it was a hush, but it, it got quiet after that. Because, you know, Shane Fair didn't ring announce the, the remainder of the show. I mean, it's one thing to lose his 50% of the GM position, but I figured he would still ring announce the rest of the show. And uh, I, they, I forgot it was Carter or Smiley. One of them broke, took the logo off the microphone, the Pro Wrestling Magic logo off the microphone. And I remember uh, Crystal, a re female referee, she came in and she picked up that microphone and brought it to the back. And I don't know who ring announced this next matchup. It was the Fast Pass. It was going to be a Fast Pass tag team match, but apparently Jay Bougie, who was going to team with Azrael, didn't show up. They were going to face the world-famous Cheeseburger and the legendary Magic. Now, as mentioned earlier, Magic was added to the one of the pre-show matches. And as I said, Jay Bougie apparently didn't show up. So it was a one-on-one -on -one match with Hispanos Unidos member Azrael taking on Wolf, the world-famous Cheeseburger. Azrael had a Trey Felipe in his corner. And uh, I think Felipe, like, interf interfered twice in the match. And a second time, Crystal gave him the thumb and showed, I wouldn't say literally showed him the curtain, but you get the point. Ejected him from ringside. But in the end, I forgot how, but... Uh, Azrael defeated Cheeseburger to win the match, and now the he gets a eventually get will be getting a shot at the junior heavyweight championship in the future. And then it was time for the big one. Well, not the big one, but one of the big ones. And not I'm I, it doesn't surprise me they went on last. I mean, this all began at Kingdom Come Six last year, and it. And it was a, all those twists and turns. and Or as the Beatles said, the long and winding road. As we saw, of the indestructible Steve Off challenged the revolver Alex Ryman for the Dark Arts Championship in three stages of hell. And by the way, uh, commentator Jimmy Riot ring announced this final match. And, ooh. Hmm. Oh boy. And eventually, the uh, the first stage was pure under pure rules. I believe uh, it was where there could be no closed fists, uh, two rope breaks a person. Uh, early in this one, Off and Ryman both got, I think they each lost a rope break. Ryman used a closed fist. He got a warning. Eventually, uh, Ryman kicks off in the balls, or he kicks Steve's offs. No, I'm not trying to be funny. And Ryman got disqualified in in stage one of this, and then the second stage, which was going to be Stevens' choice, it, it was uh, Jimmy Ryan announced to the crowd that the second stage is false count anywhere. And boy, these guys! I mean, you know, if they, they went into the crowd. They were doing so much to each other. I mean, I I'm sorry, folks, but I'm still winded from this show. And I'll tell you why as we as, as, after I get done with this final match. They eventually, they go at it. Uh, they up, end up on the stage. I believe uh, Ryman tries to hit off in the balls again, but off revealed he had a, had a protective cup on, but he eventually took it out. And I think, uh, I forgot all apologies to both men, but Ryman pinned Steve off in the, to win the, the sta stage two which was false count anywhere. And it was time for the third and final stage, which was going to go until one man says, I quit. And the referee, Joe the Ref, he had the, uh, a live microphone with him to, for, for whoever wanted to say, I quit. They come back in the ring. Steve brought a kendo stick into play, which uh, eventually Alex broke. Uh, well, actually, before he broke it, uh, Steve's son, Luke, he comes in the ring, and Alex is, like, thrilled. And... Uh, but uh, Luke, he's hitting uh, Alex with that cane. I don't know if that was as hard as, as the kid could hit could, could hit him. 
But then he Alex grabs Luke, but then Steve intervenes, and then eventually Luke gets out of the ring. Mm. Ah. Luke eventually gets out of the ring. Uh, wow. Steve, um... Did I say Steve? Yeah. Eventually, Alex broke the Singapore cane, and he's got like a well, Singapore cane, candle stick, whatever you want to call it. And he has like a broken piece of it, and he's got Steve down on the mat. He's trying to like jam it right into his eye. And even at one point, Alex is on him, and he's saying, Say you quit! And Steve's saying no. Eventually, Steve's powers manages to find the strength to get Alex off of him. No pun intended. And uh, Steve, he's like, I mean, in a moment reminiscent of Starcade 1985 when Magnum T.A. faced Tully Blanchard in a steel cage match. Um, almost reminiscent. Al, uh, Steve's got the, the Singapore cane. He's like jamming it into Alex's forehead right above his left eye. And, and the referee's asking, what do you say? What do you say? And uh, it sounded like, you know, Alex is saying yes. And, and he never said the words, I quit. But the referee stopped it. The gong went off. Steve Off defeats the revolver Alex Ryman to become the new Pro Wrestling Magic Dark Arts Champion. Oh boy. Man, I mean, what a show this was. This, this, by the way, maybe it's a good thing it started at 1 o'clock because they went a four... This was a four-hour... Hold it. This was a four-hour show went straight through with no intermission. <laughs> I just don't know how you... Uh, how you all did it. But um, definitely kudos to Pro Wrestling Magic for having such an awesome show. Just as I predicted, this ha this blue kingdom comes six out of the water. <laughs> I know, I think my voice just cracked for a moment. Okay, and uh, oof, so much to discuss. But yeah, personal notes, time. It was great seeing Shane Fair, but unfortunately, Shane, we did not get to have our picture together. I mean, I don't even know if he stuck around or stayed backstage for the rest of the show or if he left by, by a certain point. Uh, great seeing Seth, who was right behind me. Uh, Elliot, Mikey Mickendro. Uh, Bob with the prosthetic leg, which came into play. I forgot to mention this. Her, I think, use it or try to use it on Moff during that Bayonne street fight. Uh, damn, who else we've got? Other people I can think of here that I saw. Oh, Pete! How can I forget you, man? Uh, Pete. Mm. Oh, by the way, what a crowd we had. I mean, Seth, I believe you were wondering if I was going to use the megaphone or not, and that's... But I was like, you know, it depends on how the crowd size is. But I think just before, like, as the we were getting closer to the main show, that's when the crowd really started coming in. Oh, by the way, I I mean, you know, we I know how the drill is with independent wrestling, and most fans do that that they're never prompt with letting the crowd in. I mean, they said the door's gonna open at twelve noon. The doors open at twelve thirteen p.m. Twelve noon, the fans' asses. Another thing. As far as the pre-show is concerned, why do we have a damn recorded bell? I mean, I don't know if the gong was in in place yet or what the deal was. Oh, that guy, I think his name was Paul. He was uh, sitting behind me somewhere. He was dressed to the nines. I don't know if that blonde was, was his girlfriend or his wife, but <laughs> at one point... Uh, when both Ryman and Off were going at it on the stage, Ryman, I think he said to Paul, you did this. And the blonde, possibly Paul's wife or girlfriend, gives Paul two sights for the bird watchers for some reason. You know, I kept looking back at that blonde, but I know that's not the chick I used to have a crush on when, when I was a teenager long ago, but eh. But nonetheless, a lot of good-looking ladies in the crowd, too, by the way. <laughs> Seems to be the buzz about, about almost a lot of uh, shows I go to. All righty. Uh... Oh, 
I'm not gonna do Scatman John, rest his soul. If I forgot anything or not. Oh, memorable quotes, here we go. It's five o'clock somewhere. Lady in the crowd when Moff and Kerr had beers in their had the beers in their hands after the, the Bayonne street fight. It's five o'clock in the middle of the ring, goddammit! Moff in response to that lady in the crowd. Hispanos Unidos. Shane Fair when uh, when he got out of the ring as quickly as possible right after getting out of the ring as quickly as possible when Sebastian K and Trey Felipe attacked Death Row before the gong went off. Hey Lottie! Alex Ryman, when he noticed me uh, during the I forgot which stage of hell, and before, right before he gave me a sight for the bird watchers. Oh, uh, after the uh, three-way uh, women's title matchup, I went to buy a pretzel, but unfortunately, and I met, I tried, I, I got the last one. I understand because somebody, a lady behind me, tried to try to buy one, but she was told that they were that I got the last one. Uh, the problem was most of that pretzel was fucking hard as a rock. I couldn't even, you can't even bite into it. Next, next time I decide to buy a pretzel, I'll do it much sooner. Okay. Uh, I know I'm kind of slipping on my words here. Oh, nice seeing uh, Karen. Uh, spelled with a C. Saw her after the show. Uh, that gentleman on the cane right next to me, he seemed like a great, he seemed like it was great to sit sit next to. I gotta say, we had quite the, the crowd, too. And uh, I'll get back to the crowd shortly. But I felt for that other gentleman with his wife that also he was walking on a cane. And at one point, he and his wife got up, I think, during the Moff Kerr match. And even though the gentleman's walking on a cane, I, he couldn't even, like, stand up straight, it seemed. I don't know if it's his, if it's his age or his weight. But, you know... How about those kids in the crowd with the football jerseys? I guess that could be the from the team that Kerr coaches. I don't know if it's middle school football or little league football. But those kids were a riot throughout the night. and uh, They're big fans of just about every member of Hispanos Unidos. And by the way, Hispanos Unidos, I mean, with the exception of Azrael and Steve Pena, everybody else in that group were defeated in their matchup and they no longer have championships. You know, Donovan lost the junior heavyweight title. J.C. Storm lost the women's title. And they no longer have the tag team championship. And I understand they were using the free bird. Fab fabulous free bird rule. Okay. Uh, mm, let's see here. Am I forgetting anything? Uh, it was such a show, number one. Uh, let me see. Um, the new metal, the new metal band that performed after the show. Oh, they were great. Maybe it'd be, it'd be cool to get them if they get, they come to another sh show to perform before before a show, after a show, or during a show, or even during an intermission, or have them do have them perform live as somebody's walking to the ring for their match. But I think now, okay, now's a great time to plug, up, folks. Pro Wrestling Magic kicks off 2023 on Saturday night, January 28th. That night features the, I believe now, the fifth Chad Adams Memorial Rumble. And, of course, we only the only participant we know is in is the one-winged dragon, Chris Ryan. And, by the way, the 2023 theme of the show titles is One Hit Wonders. Saturday night, January 28th, the show is titled My Own Worst Enemy. And uh, who knows if the show will live up to that show title. But based on everything that went down at Kingdom Come 7 Tower of Magic, I would like to see... Uh, damn. Ugh. Well, I hope that the, well, the, the chat I was rumble, I hope there'll be a lot of great surprises, surprise uh, appearances. That's what I hope to see. Because uh, I know that they're going to need bodies, as we know. But, uh... 
damn, I really... Okay, I'd like to see the newly crowned junior heavyweight champion, Vinny Powerpunch Pacifico, take on Hispanos Unidos member Azriel, who won the Fast Pass match over Cheeseburger. Uh, I'd like to see the newly crowned Dark Arts champion, Steve Off. Uh, well, I'm sure he'll be defending his title. I don't know if it'll... Actually, actually, I forgot to mention, by virtue of the victory, well, not by the victory, but of, that ma of the match stipulation, there's no rematch between those two ever. At least not as long as Steve Off is Dark Arts champion, I guess. And Steve Off's career was on the line, but he pretty much saved his career. And I forgot to mention, he took the microphone after the match, and his son Luke was in the ring with him, and Steve Off said, I didn't do this for ego, I did this... And he said he did it for his son, and, well, the promotions were, well, I don't know if his son, I mean, his son's only six, and Pro Wrestling Magic started back in 2015, which was seven, almost eight years ago. Uh, well, actually, no, I'd like to see the first crowned Tri-Wizards champions prolific, say, face, see the three of them face any three members of Hispanos Unidos, uh, but I don't know which three it would end up being. Uh, pfft, wow. But yeah, so much went down. Oh, almost every, oh, yeah, look at that. The, the first try was its champions were crowned and all the other championships changed hands. Hmm. And, uh, and you know, it's definitely uh, phew, quite the show this was again. I know I keep saying it and I'm still feeling tired and stuff. But I will say this, Pro Wrestling Magic... What a event. And for anybody, for anybody out there that thinks Pro Wrestling Magic is not what it used to be, I think this show proved everybody wrong. The magic is not only still there, but the magic, if it ever left, it's back. And hopefully a good portion of the crowd that came for this event will come for the Chatham's Rumble Saturday night, January 28th. My own worst enemy for what's about to be another great show to kick off another year of Pro Wrestling Magic action. But the big question is, with Smiley as number one, no, number one, sorry. Smiley now the 100% owner, or 100% or 1 ownership of the general manager's position. And since Shane Fair didn't ring out the last two matches, where does Sh is Shane Fair still going to be the ring announcer? Is he... Going to be back in some kind of capacity? Is he going to go by the scenes? Uh, oh, just hope a lot of stuff. I mean, I mean, hopefully this isn't the last we've seen of Shane Fair because, you know, we didn't get that picture together. And I don't know if we'll ever get another Magic Masses photo together. But I will tell you this, folks. Uh, coming soon to hashtag the Magic Masses Facebook page will be my... Will be the Pro Wrestling Magic 2022 awards that I'll be giving out. Okay? And they'll be a, and yes, it'll be done in a video form. So, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed it. The Magic Masses. A great way for me to make my return. And oh man. Ooh, I don't know. Oh man, this was something. Man, oh man. Pro Wrestling Magic. Just like corn, here to stay.